Thanks for the opportunity to present here today. My name is Gregory Chen from MSD, locating in Zurich, working in a team of about 50 HTA statisticians. The umbrella statistical organization in MSD research laboratory is called Biostatistic and Research Decision Sciences, or abbreviated internally as BATS. Our BART HTA statistic branch focus on performing additional analysis of clinical trial data for HTA and reimbursement dossier across countries, sometimes using different subpopulations, subgroup factors, endpoints, methods, multiple data sources, and increasingly now using also methods of indirect treatment comparison. A lot of our work relate to provide necessary input to support health economic evaluation performed by another BATS branch called Health Economic Decision Science. So today's presentation is to share with you our system lifecycle management from development to validation of R packages and Shiny application and our current R pipeline in HTA space that facilitate our day-to-day -day operation with hopefully stably high quality and investigate insights from massive statistical outputs with a complex structure. Um, since it's not directly about cost-effective analysis, which I know is a keen interest of this group, uh, I will try to focus on the general software develop, uh, development processes without too much dive into the work related to clinical data reassessment. Hopefully that most parts can be then of reference value of interest to this audience when it comes to how to develop R tools. At the end of presentation, at the end of the presentation, maybe it consolidates the allergic impression about the corporate that we really have a way to make simple things come more complicated. Um, or hopefully more of you will feel like there is a good rationale of why we are doing what we are doing. And more importantly, maybe you would like to join us in some open source collaboration to further streamline the software developed practice and bring forward more R tools in HTA space. Now, official part of the presentation, first of all, a standard statement of formality. I would like to declare that the content and position shared here are reflect only my own view and understanding, only reflecting and uh, not reflecting and presenting any MSD's position. I would also like to thank a broad team of about 40 individuals, so I did not enlist in, in all the names, who work in Global BEMR initiative or its HTA chapter contributed to the development or the refinement of the internal SDLC for our package and application and the application or package you're going to hear about in the coming slides. So let me first by um, the delineating what type of the statistical software that interests MSD um, and, and our team. This is a relevant point to keep in the backside of our mind since we as our programmer can do more and more nowadays with the language. In particular, Shiny provides a very flexible and easy framework um, for our programmer to create interactive web application. However, it's important to, for our internal team to go through some self-reflection before adding an item to the pipeline development plan. Um, at the end of the day, we are a group of statisticians, not IT function, developing general software. It's maybe not serving our best interest. And besides well-defined scope of the tool, it's going to make the validation much more manageable and meaningful. There are three more bullet points here that we'll, we will also keep in mind uh, for self-reflection when trying to add in a pipeline idea so that we know we will try to create automation too, but not all the content of the statisticians will are meaningful to be automated. And our job don't stop at generating piles and piles of results. So creating some tool to help in insight extraction is also useful. And lastly, in the organization like MSD, you can imagine they are not all R programming. And actually in the clinical space, majority of the programmer are not R programmers. And so utilizing Shiny um, to our advantage side to make sure that many of state-of-art R package out there, uh, many of them are developed potentially by a lot of uh, people today in the audience that are suitable and sometimes indispensable for their analysis. 
So I would like to then give out um, a, a, a simple layout of the internal R ecosystem that we're having. So our HTAR pipeline resists in a carefully configured and maintained IT environment equipped with relatively comprehensive sets of utility tools for our work and a set of well-established processes. The system development lifecycle management, which abbreviated as SDLC uh, here and afterwards, um, it's, it's two key pillars. Um, the processes are important for compliance reason, but also for enforcing a minimum quality standards across our work done by different teams and individuals. All our related effort in BATS is currently led by an initiative called BEMR, short for BATS Advanced Analytical Methods in R. This slide plots out the simplified layout of our internal R environment. So the individual code can be developed in the post-it workbench and previously known as R Studio Workbench online version of PC IDE. I'm, I'm sure the audience are familiar with the application and other interactive uh, documents could be then published to Post-it Connect, which is a central server with access control. The user of your publication does not need to worry about having R installed locally. Publication can also be configured in a way it recognizes who have access and running the content this is particularly handy when it comes to publishing an application that enable user to do certain analysis on clinical data. Last point maybe worthwhile to note is the post-it package manager. So it includes an in internal and internally developed R package and externally a external package that go through our qualification processes. This external R package qualification is for security and quality reason. I sought to include this slide uh, as a reading material in case some of the audience today have interest to know how to make your great work more easily citable into an industry practitioner. So basically, it's a risk-based approach, and the detail you can find through once you get the slide uh, through this link of the papers. Um, the approach is MSD's approach, but is well benchmarked with um, with FDA, ICH, and cross industry initiatives such as Avidation Hub and Chance Accelerate. So I would like to come to the core part of my presentation today maybe skip the development style and start with the SDLC of an R package. So there are in general eight steps. The BATS R developer typically start with using internal utility R package to populate a basic source file structure. See for example, the screenshot of an MSD internal R package on the right side of the slide. You may find most of the parts of the source file familiar as similar to the basic R package template that you will be able to populate by using R Studio and uh, creating a new project. For example, the basic description, including description file license, news, uh, readme markdown file are there. There are several ones that are less as a standard, such as the YAMA file, uh, the format CSS file for the R package website uh, through package down, marking the green one. Then the placeholder for necessary validation and process document marking the yellow one probably is also uh, relatively less standard. And lastly, mark in the blue one is the um, other yanking folders and groovy files, which is kind of symmetric part to GitHub action. They will trigger CICD process so that every commit to your master branch from this moment onwards, a predefined set of action and checks will go through. Moving on to the step two and three, um, maybe the only point worthwhile mentioned here is that we utilize the Rustigen headers to document the specification of R function, namely what step the function need to go through to deliver its objective. Um, the next step is to perform unit test. The user review and completes the documentation. Unit test is undoubtedly a crucial part of an R package. I presume most of this audience is familiar with the concept. If more detail is needed, one can find in the chapter 13 to 15 in R package book. A link is provided here. To user, 
uh, unit test result is evidence of quality. To developer themselves, this could be a set of standard check that you want to run repeatedly when there are changes to the function in follow-up versions. However, um, and I would like to raise the concept of the code coverage, which is quite closely attached to unit tests, namely what portion of the lines in percentage of total number of lines of the code in your R script under R folder has been executed during the unit test. It's important to bear in mind that this metric alone is not an adequate indicator of good quality because we can all think of a cases the algorithm is implemented wrongly but do not trigger an error. If the entire testing plan is in place, this would be that much more helpful for quality check. Our SDLC ensures this by asking to document test objective for every test lab function using the use.list R package and make up a over, overview R markdown file uh, to display all testing objective for different functions across the board for reviewing purposes. The code coverage, of course, is also reported um, so you can see under the VNF folder. All the R markdown file under the VNF folder and the main folders will then be composed and displayed as a website or package down. Structure of the content on the website is specified in YAMA file by yourself. And um, this become the first line documentations for our user can consult and the central location for the developer to publish notification or hang out links to tutorial training videos when they become available. Step two to eight can then be repeated when a newer version is in scope. There are some change management issues need to be considered when some R function needed to be deprecated or the entire R package will be retired. However, this topic is very specialized and only relevant to operations. So for the sake of time and general interest level, I will skip here. Now we come to the SDOC of a Shiny application. You will find the step uh, on the left side are very similar to an R package, which are different pieces, which the different pieces are highlighted in Salmon Red. Our internal app developer can start with standard template out of three choices, basic R, uh, dashboard, that's bootstrap three, or BS4 dash, that's bootstrap four. The template populates a standard software package structure, pre-install some functionality such as the one circled in the slides. In MSD, we require the source file of a production grade Shiny application to be constructed as an R package, similar to what is advocated in Golden Framework. Hence, the core functionality in the source files can then be assessed through the application also as an R package. Since the app already has a web interface, no additional package down website will be built. Hence, we pre-install some features to display necessary documents there. Now, the biggest difference of the source file structure is under the ins folder. The majority of the app source file are located here. I will skip the detail, but you have the slide so you can go through. If you have feedback, please reach out to discuss. I'll only mention, maybe only mention one note here is the module folder, as you can see here. It also collects functions. So a natural question one could pose is what function should be put under R folder, what function should be put under inst shiny app, and then module folder. To know the distinction, this brings us to two concepts in shiny SDLC, namely functionality and user feature. A Shiny application can roughly be viewed as putting a user interface in front of an R package. In our SDLC, functionality of an R of an application refer to those uh, backend features make simulation, calculation, modeling, plotting, or any reporting related function, say generating a table or file that you can directly use in an official report. R function associated with functionality therefore need to be put then in an R folder and will be validated you via the unit test in the same fashion as in an R package. The user feature refers to front end features uh, on, on the user server interact with which user can achieve certain outcomes, say filter or sort a table, download a report after clean a click a button, these features will be validated for so-called user acceptance test. This test has a different focus than the unit test. Giving an example here, UAT concern if a repo is generated when a button is clicked. 
the, while the unit test concern is the content of the generated report is correct or not. Since the application, uh, the shiny application has a user interface, the user experience design is at its essence. Developer typically start application design by collecting user stories, putting out, uh, putting themselves in user shoes, design necessary interactivity features and simple workflow to navigate a user from A to Z. However, the real perception of the user can be only evaluated and uh, reviewed after pilot. Devils are in the detail. Each individual inconvenience alone might be small, but collectively it could discourage the user from touching your application ever again. Also, try to uncover if there are loopholes in the application design that the user can take advantage of and then abuse your app is also, uh, is also necessary. Um, for, for the purpose of properly control the quality of the output. All this make the pilot step critical and is required in our SDLC of the application to properly pilot an application before even entering UAT, the user acceptance test, because usually it's already too late and the UAT is not designed to really collect user feedback. A couple of minutes, please, Gregory. Thanks for notice. Okay. Um, and then, so I will skip the majority of the list slides because it's tried to give an example of some shiny modules we're developing. And um, the, the screenshots are there to, for, for future review. So I will jump to the HDAR pipeline we're currently having. It's still very young, only started last year in May. Here is an overview of the pipeline. On the R side, we focus more on creating our package as internal analysis and reporting wrapper. For example, uh, for the sake of time, I will only give you one example. That is the MKSO CE. So it critically de depending on flex serve and survival packages. Um, and it, it includes the it fits the several parametric model include the usual seven distribution assumption, two piece exponential model, flex spline with a range of nodes uh, for any given survival data, outputting several goodness of fit metric and then collect them in, in a format that is uh, reportable. And for the kind of R package to help implementing more recent or you know late innovative methods that we don't have a standard of package could be cited externally. We try to do this in open source collaboration with other companies. So which I will give in the last detail slides in the last few minutes. On the shiny application sites, we are mostly looking for three categories and you will find later on in the slide deck a screenshots to give an example on the inside extraction site. It was using the Amnox safety as an example. AMNOC is regarding to the HTA dossier submission in Germany. Um, so it might not be relevant to this group of people, but what is com what could be a common struggle is um, how to go through uh, a gigantic pile of statistical outcomes with um, different subpopulation structures and the dosage. And so how to review the massive results um, jointly. So the shiny application, the interactivity providing a way to help the user to jump from table to table, prod to table, jump uh, to land on a specific comfort point in a wide spectrum of details and overviews. And you will see in the screenshot later on that um, how do we propose to solving this. So lastly, I would like to maybe give it to um, about the existing open source collaboration effort that we are having. I think this audience for sure do not need to be convinced about the value of the open source. One point on this slide uh, is to say that open source does not, does not naturally mean good quality too for public usage. It depends on the way we're doing it. That's why I thought it worthwhile to share our SDLC. Uh, we, have, we also have such kind of exchanges with other peer company. So if you like the way we are doing it or like uh, to help us doing open source R tools develop them better or take part in certain items in our pipeline plan, please reach out and join us. I think this will help us to de develop a stronger collaboration between the software working string that I'm highlighting here uh, with the R4HTA consortium. 
which um, is is a hope for us to achieve in near future. So the meeting minutes of this software development is always uh, publicly available. So you can see the working plan and the pipeline idea directly there. The homepage and GitHub link are also provided here. Um, the current item we are working on is Maik Plus. So I will just stop it here uh, for the sake of time. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Gregory. That is, well, as noted by Howard, very thorough. That seems that is definitely something aspirational, very impressive. Um, uh, we're slightly overrunning, so I think uh, any questions, would you mind um, if uh, what? There's definitely one from Howard in the chat, uh, if you could take a look at that afterwards. Um,